Ever wondered how cybersecurity professionals lure and trap attackers? Welcome to the intriguing world of honeypots, a cybersecurity mechanism designed to deceive and distract potential attackers. Through this fascinating strategy, security professionals can observe, study, and analyze the tactics and techniques used by these digital miscreants. Now, when it comes to honeypots, they are not all created equal. In fact, there are several types, each serving specific purposes based on their deployment and the level of interaction they allow. First, let's explore research honeypots. These come in two flavors, low interaction and high interaction. Low interaction honeypots are the lightweight contenders in this category. They simulate limited services or protocols, providing basic interaction capabilities that emulate vulnerabilities or services. This allows for a minimal amount of interaction to gather information without exposing the actual system. On the other hand, high interaction honeypots are the heavyweights. They are more complex and realistic, emulating entire systems and applications. These honeypots allow extensive interaction, creating an environment that closely mirrors real systems. While they offer deeper insights, they can be more resource intensive and carry a higher risk if compromised. Next up are production honeypots. These include server honeypots and network honeypots. Server honeypots mimic specific server services like FTP, SSH, SMTP, and so on. They're deployed within a network to attract and monitor attacks targeting those services, helping to understand attack patterns and techniques against server-side applications. Network honeypots, meanwhile, are deployed at the network perimeter or within a network segment to detect and analyze attacks targeting the entire network. They can emulate multiple services and capture a broader range of attack activities. Then we have application honeypots, specifically client honeypots. These imitate client-side applications, such as web browsers or email clients. Their primary function is to capture attacks targeting end-user systems, allowing them to detect and analyze malware delivery, phishing attempts, or exploitation of client-side vulnerabilities. Finally, we have a potency-based classification of honeypots. This includes low interaction honeypots, which have limited functionality and don't fully emulate the targeted system. While they are easier to deploy, they provide limited insights. And then there are high interaction honeypots, which provide a more realistic environment. These are designed to closely simulate actual systems or services, allowing for in-depth analysis of attacker behavior. However, they require more resources and maintenance. In summary, Honeypots can be valuable tools for cybersecurity professionals looking to gather threat intelligence, understand emerging attack techniques, identify new vulnerabilities, and enhance defensive strategies. But remember, deploying and maintaining honeypots requires expertise to ensure they don't become a security risk themselves if compromised. So, tread carefully in this intriguing world of deception and counter-deception.